resonate in our hearts let it be planted in our hearts in the name of Jesus we come by the blood we come by the word and we come by the spirit of God and this service is opened in the name of Jesus amen amen welcome to the house of God can we please have a seat thank you choir can we give them a round of applause can we give a round of applause to the choir hallelujah to be in the presence of the Most High God. He said, where two or three are gathered, he said he is there. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, we are still in the month of April. We are in the month of April and a quick reminder, this is a season of grace beyond, what? Grace beyond measure. Grace beyond measure. Hallelujah. And this month, the word that came uh, by grace of God through the potter's touch from our pastor, he made reference that it's a season of grace for distinction. Season of grace for distinction, I believe. If I'm wrong, please correct me. It's a season of grace for distinction. Before I go ahead with the word, I just want to quickly welcome everybody. It's really good to see our beautiful faces in the house of God. I see some, I see some familiar faces. This is Mrs. Rhonda. It's really good to see you. Can we give her a round of applause? Hallelujah. I know we are seeing some new faces in the house, but it's a privilege to see new faces. I pray that God continue to bless you. As you have come, you will not go back the same in Jesus' name. Amen. It's really good to see you. Hallelujah. Amen. And also, I would like to um, thank our leaders on seat, our pastors that has given us this opportunity to stand here to um, release the word. I pray that the word will not escape us. And at the same time, that God will continue to elevate our leaders in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Just a brief re reminder before I go ahead with the word. This is a youth Sunday. I don't want it to be too rigid. Amen. It's a youth Sunday, right? And I just want to do a quick reminder. I'm not a pastor, please. Because I'm standing here and I'm preaching. I'm not a pastor. I am a child of God. And my sign is the cross. Hallelujah. So I'm just doing what my daddy said I should do. 
Amen. Amen. I don't have a title. Amen. But I pray that God will use me as his mouthpiece today to release his word in the name of Jesus. And none of us will be found, found wanting in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'll be going ahead with the topic for, um, for today. The topic for today is what is meant to be yours will always be yours. Can somebody say what is meant to be mine will always be mine. I don't know about you, but my blessings have my name on it. It is untouchable. You cannot touch it. It might look as if it's, it, something is being delayed. No, 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 no. My name is on my, say my name is on my blessings. My blessings are designated for me. I can't miss what is meant for me. What I am looking for is looking for me. And you know, as you are saying that, those words, he said, the, the, he said the, your words have power. When you are speaking it, you are speaking the word of, we are speaking the word of life and everything is coming to life in Jesus' name. Amen. What is meant to be yours will be yours. And I, I, it's like the Lord, I, I believe it was the day before yesterday, or yesterday that this word just, you know, resonated. God was showing me this same pattern of words. What is meant to be yours will be yours. And I was make, in making reference to my own like personal situations. There are things I'm actually waiting for. Of course, things, there are many things that we are all waiting for. You get to a stage where you've like you've reached certain milestones, but it's like there is more. It's like you expect there should be more. From one stage, you're not, you are going to another stage. You finish this stage, you are going to another stage. But there is a waiting period that can make you, that can, that can, it begins to question your faith. The waiting period can be quite critical. And daddy made, uh, our pastor, our pastor Balaji Tuashe, the, the major word he used to release um, the, the, the word for grace for distinction was the idea of a worthy portion. And it was taken from 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 5. That was, our ma- that was our major Bible verse for this month. 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 5. Please, can we open our Bibles there? Because that will be where we'll be taking our, our major reference. 1 Samuel um, chapter 1 verse 5. But before I go ahead and read that major Bible verse, I would like to start from verse 1 and then I pray that as the word is being released, the Lord will bring out revelations for us in the name of Jesus. Amen. And in First Samuel, we are talking about it's, was the chapter itself was making reference to um, the birth of Samuel. I believe we have our Bibles uh, with us. If you have an, I believe we all have like Bible apps. Hallelujah. Please open your Bibles. You are here to you know, to receive the word of God. Now, the birth of Samuel, there was a certain man from Ramah time, a Sufite from the hill country of Ephraim, whose name was Elkanah, son of Jeroham, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zuf, an Ephraimite. He had two wives. One was called Anna and the other Penina. Penina had children. Hannah had none. Year after year, this man went up from his town to worship and sacrifice to the Lord Almighty at Shiloh, where Hophni and Phinehas, the sons of Eli, were priests of the Lord. Whenever the day came for Elkanah to sacrifice, he would give portions of the meat to his wife, Penina, and to all her sons and daughters. But here's what verse 5 now says. He said, but to Hannah, somebody say Hannah, I stand in the position of Hannah, but he said, but to Hannah, he said he gave her, in in the NIV version, he says he gave her a double portion. In the KJV, he says he gave her a worthy portion. Remember, this is a season of grace beyond measure. If you look at, in general, RCCG worldwide is what? The season of the double portion. He gave Anna a double portion because what? He loved her. He loved Hannah. So, Hannah was preferred above Penina. And the Lord, and guess what now? He said because he loved her, comma, and the Lord had what? Closed her womb. What? The person that is being favored, the person that is being loved, can't bear children. But 
God did not, he, he, even God's word itself, he said he, he has never called any of us barren, that we are meant to be fruitful and multiply. So what's going on? That means Hannah was in a waiting period. Say the waiting period. The waiting period. In the waiting period, it might look as if you are barren, but there is a process going on. In the waiting period, this is where the place or the fruit of patience will be born. This is where the place of self-control, this is where the place of perseverance will be born. And Anna was in that waiting period. And verse 6, it said, because the Lord had closed Anna's womb, her arrival kept provoking her in order to irritate her. Verse 7, and this went on year after year. When Anna went up to the house of the Lord, a rival provoked her. Anna was provoked. It was not because Anna was barren. That was why she went to, to the temple at Shiloh. No, Anna went to Shiloh because her enter. The people that envied Anna provoked Anna. You should be thankful for the people that envy you. Be thankful for them because they will provoke you to your blessings. In this season, anybody looking down on you, anybody troubling you, they will provoke you to your blessings in the name of Jesus. He said, and Anna was provoked. A rival kept provoking her in order to irritate, irritate her. Why was Penina irritating Hannah? Penina had children, but Anna had none. Then why? It was envy. Remember he said, um, um, the, um, a husband... Her husband loved Anna. He gave her a worthy portion, but her womb. Anna always received that special package. She always received that worthy portion. In this season, I'm telling you that God has a special portion for you. You will notice things about you. You notice people start looking at you differently. Some people start looking down on you. Why? Because there is a worthy portion waiting for you. I want you to sit up with your chest up. Sit like a proper gentleman and a lady. Because the destiny that is ahead of you is as bright as the sun. Hallelujah. And your light will keep on shining brighter and brighter unto a perfect day in the name of Jesus. He said, they, this went on year after year. Whenever Anna went up to the house of the Lord, a rival provoked her till she wept and would not eat. She was provoked to tears. She was provoked to fasting. Ah, some things will get to you, you will decide to fast. Hey, I, I realize why some people are not fast. Why are you eating a lot? You have not been provoked. <laughs> Your situation has not provoked you to not eat. In, and, and she was provoked to not eat. And her husband, Elkanah, would say to her, Hannah, why are you weeping? Why don't you eat? Why are you downhearted? Don't I mean more to you than ten sons? Now imagine it's Jesus talking to you. And in references this, it said, he said, verse 9, I said, once they had finished eating and drinking at Shiloh, Anna stood up. Now Eli the priest was sitting in his chair by the doorposts of the Lord's house. In a deep anguish, Anna prayed to the Lord, weeping bitterly. And in verse 11, she made a vow saying, Lord Almighty, if you will look on your servant's misery and remember me. If you will look on your servant's misery and remember me. And not forget your servant, but give her a son. Then Anna said something. Then I would give him to the Lord for all the days of his life. And I want us, because Anna later, Anna was, the, God remembered Anna, and her womb was later open. But I want us to pick up the things. How Anna unlocked what was meant for her. Something was meant for Anna, but Anna needed a proper positioning to attract what belongs to her. Say you need to be properly positioned. I need to be properly positioned. For what is meant for me to come to me. There are some of us here. What is what you are looking for is looking for you, but you have not positioned yourself aright. You might be amongst the wrong people. He said, Blessed what blessed is the man that walketh not what in the counsel of the ungodly, nor seated in how can you be sitting with scoffers? You are standing with sinners. They say they are standing, they are not walking. If you read that Psalm 1, he said, blessed is the man that's... He said, what blessed is the man that walketh. He, he's not walking in the path of sinners. He said, standing. They, there's a place where they said the sinners, the scoffers were standing. Or some, they would say they are sitting. There's no movement. If you are amongst a particular association where they, are, they look as if they are doing something, but there's no movement. There is no moving forward. You need to reposition yourself. You might need to cut. I don't know who that word is for. You might need to cut off from some things. It might even be things 
like social media. I remember one of our brothers was saying uh, social media was, you know, distracting him and a lot of things. He had to reduce it. You might reduce it, you might cut it off. Yes, these are forms of associations that look as if, no, you are bearing fruit, but actually you're not doing anything. You are actually stagnant. And he said, let not your servant, he said, remember me and not forget your servant, but give her a son. And then I will give her to the, him to the Lord for all the days of his life. And no razor will ever be used on his head. And one, now let's pinpoint the major, the major, um, the major steps Hannah took to attract what belonged to her. Pardon me if my, if my, um, my whole content doesn't, doesn't have a, the perfect structure. But I don't want you to miss the points that are coming forth. One of the, number one, the number one point I will make reference to was a place of humility and worship. I wanted to cover everything with obedience, but it's like the idea of humility, obedience, and worship. Anna had that place of humility. Yes, Penina was provoking Hannah, but I never saw where Anna spoke back to Penina. I never saw it. I, 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 I'm not reading the part where and Anna spoke back. And Anna spoke back to Penana. Penana, if you try me, eh? hey, you will hear it today. Fire will come down in heaven. If you ever talk like that. no, Penina, Anna was Anna was quiet, but she was sad. But that she she channeled it to brood something, to brood her, to brood what she wanted. Hallelujah. In the place of humility and obedience and worship, if you go to 2 Chronicles, second, I think 2 Chronicles chapter um, 7, verse 14. I don't know if somebody can quickly open that Bible verse for me. 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. And I'm hoping I, I'm hoping I have the, the right Bible verse too. 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. Who is there? Mm. And what? And heal their land. Now, I, I, I came across one of... Daddy, um, Pastor Deboye has a very... Uh, I, I think he has a Redeemer's Network channel. And it's a live network that's always on even without the Holy Ghost service. And I just clicked it one time, and it was like, Pastor, that, that the other boy was speaking to me. He said, the blessing has your name. He said, the blessing is for my people. He said, the blessing has your name on it. But he now said, if my people, there is a condition. Yes, what is meant for you, well, it's, it's for you, but there is a condition. He said, if my people, who are called by what? By my name. He said that shall humble themselves and pray. Anna did that. Anna humbled herself and she went to what? Where? Anna went to Shiloh. She humbled herself and she sought the Lord. In Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5, he said, trust in what? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. He said, lean not on your own what? Understanding in all your ways acknowledge him. That was the number one step Anna took. If you look at it in reference, also talking about humility, obedience, and worship. One of the, the, the major um, word, one of the major word that um, God gave to the Israelites, he said, hacking onto, he kept saying, hacking onto my commandments, hacking onto my decrees and laws, and this will be yours, and this will be yours, your bounds will be filled, and this will be yours, and you will be blessed. He said, if there was always a condition. And the condition is in the place of obedience. It's in the place of humility. And humility leads you to prayer. The, the, the one equation I've always used, if I find myself having pride, one particular litmus test I check is the place of if I'm still constant in prayer. When I begin to neglect the place of prayer, then I have arrived. But no. But the people that are called by my name. He said what? They will humble themselves and do what? And pray. Anna humbled herself and she sought the Lord. The second point is the place of diligence. The place of diligence. Hannah was diligent in seeking the Lord. I don't want to, I don't want us to take too much time trying to open um, to the Bible verses, but in Hebrews Chapter 11, verse 6, he said, now faith, he said, he said, he who comes to God was, must what? Must know that he was, that he is what? Eh? That is a reward, no. Hmm. 
reigning, Bible scholars, hallelujah. Hallelujah, our God reigns. That he is, and he's a what? A rewarder. There is a reward for those that what? That diligently what? Seek him. Anna had the, a character of diligence. And I don't think, Elkan, there was favor upon Anna for Elkanah to be in love with his wife. But I believe Hannah also had other attributes that Elkanah really loved. And I believe that was a place of diligence. It wasn't just a place of diligence for prayer. It could be maybe even in things in her businesses, in what she's doing in her house. He saw, he saw her diligence. In the word of God, he said hard work leads to prosperity in the Proverbs. Hard work leads to prosperity. He said only fools I do away their time. He said if you look at the lazy the lazy tones like the hinges of a door to the left and to the right. But he said poverty is waiting for him. I don't know who you are. You are wallowing in the squalor of laziness. Let me tell you, poverty is waiting for you. But those that are diligent, the word of God now says in, in, the Prover in Proverbs chapter 28 verse 29, I believe 26 or 28, 28 25 verse 29, he said what? Seeth a man, what? Diligent in his word, business. Anna, she minded her business. Some people don't have to mind. You don't, you don't have work. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Some people don't have to mind their business. Oh, it's not your business. You're talking. Eh, what happened to Rihanna? Eh, Rihanna this. Ah, ah. Rihanna is enjoying her money. She's enjoying her life. You, you are here. Oh, this one happened. Let's gossip about this person. Or oh, let's, just, let's just stop because we have nothing to talk about. Let's talk about somebody else's business. Because your life was boring anyways. That's why you're looking for somebody else's business to talk about. It's true. Because if you are venturing in your own business, your life will be so interesting that you don't have time to talk about anybody's business or shortcomings. Hannah had no time to talk about Penina or whatever she, she has or her sons. Hannah had her own business. He says, see a man diligent in his business. You are looking at somebody, ah, this person is shining, ah, wow, now only you. No, the person is minding their business. So I will advise you in this season that you mind your business. I don't know who that word is for, but God is telling you to mind your business. That word might be start a business. That word might be focus on your studies. That word might be what were the dreams that I gave you. It means you should start working on that dream and that vision. Are you so distracted by the business of others that you are forgetting the dreams that you had? You are forgetting the aspirations that you had. You have forgotten the drive that will push you to be a go-getter. Then we ask, why is this girl always on fire? I have a dream. I have a business. Do you have a dream? Do you have a business? Martin Luther King had a dream. That man had a dream that he changed, he, 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 he perfected the trajectory of the, of the black generations ahead of him. Do you have a dream? I don't know who you are in the house today. If your dreams are dead, I decree and declare your dreams are coming back to life in the name of Jesus. Do you have a dream? Anna saw, Anna did not, Anna, I feel Anna saw deeper than what it was. To the extent that she gave her only, she gave her firstborn son, Samuel, for the Lord. There was something Anna saw. Anna had a dream. Anna had a dream. She had a dream of a son. She had a dream of a child. And that child was not an ordinary child. You may have two children. You may have five children. You may be a grandmother. But the one that we have, we change you generations ahead of me. The one that we have, we change the future. Hallelujah. What dream do you have? Don't envy anybody. If you have your own, own your own can change the world. Think bigger. Dream bigger. She minded a business. Number three points. The third point was the place of sowing and sacrifice. Anna sowed. She didn't sow Small, small thing, eh? God, yeah. If you do this thing for me, I will be coming to God, I'll be cleaning Shiloh every day. You know, I would know what she was praying for. She sacrificed what she was praying for. He said, Whatever, there's a major reference that an apostle said that whatever you give, you outgrow. If you cannot let some things go, you cannot outgrow it. When you begin to let certain things, it can be money. Some people, it can be relationships. If you don't let go of that thing, you can't outgrow it. What you can let go, you outgrow. There are major references that nothing 
you put in the hand of God is ever lost. You serve the God that is the God of multiplication. If you let go, it will multiply it. Do not think that you have wasted years. It is impossible when you are serving the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Some of us, you may not be seeing a lot of fruit, but if one fruit you bear can change the trajectory of a generation. Do not trivialize what you have. Do not take for granted the children you have because those ones you have, you can use it to change your nation. You can use it to change your community. Anna sold bountifully. If you look at the word in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6, that the Aboye, Aboye said, he said, if you sow bountifully, what? You reap bounty. If you sow what? Sparingly. You reap sparingly. If you sow little, you reap little. If you sow much, you reap much. Remember the parable of the talents? In the parable of the talent, they gave one five, he multiplied it. In the parable, the, the, the other one, was it, one, is it three, right? He gave the other one three, he multiplied it. And the last one, he gave one talent. That one went to bury it. Mumu. <laughs> he mumu went to bury it. Then he, he, was, he was insulting his master. That so, 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 and so. No. <laughs> he that was so sparingly, we read sparingly. He that sows bountifully will reap bountifully. Maybe what you are looking for, with what you have left, you need to let go for more to come. It could be that relationship and it's, ah, let it go. Let something better come. Are there certain things in your life you are finding really hard to let go of? Maybe if you let it go, more will come. In this season, I decree and declare over each and every one of us, more will come for us in the name of Jesus. And if we now make reference to Anna, did Anna reap bountifully when she sold bountifully? Yes. After Samuel, not that Samuel was not even an ordinary person. He was a prophet. A, a, <laughs> one, one of the major prophets in the Bible. Apart from that, God now gave her extra, I think extra five or four. Four more. Four more children came later. Hallelujah. Whatever you give, whatever you can give, you are outgrown. And the last point I will make reference to tonight is a place of wisdom. But before I go there, before I go there, in the place of sowing, I want you to see it as sacrifice. Sacrifice. Sacrifice hurts. Ah. You know, I used to, there was, I, I, I let some money go. <laughs> I thought I would be okay. <laughs> He got to the second week. I said, God, <laughs> my chest. <laughs> no, you no, you think ah, I beg nice. Nah, Shebi is money. God take. Eh? Take. Three days later. Hey. I said, God, I wonder. Help me. Father Lord, open something. Help me. And he shows up. But your sacrifice is never a waste. There are some of us who, some of us, you might not have let go money maybe to God. But some people can be, in, 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 some have some, um, some business venture and they invested in it. And they say, oh, the money got lost. And you know the funny thing? Some people that don't give up in certain investment, later on, they have major returns. You'll be like, what happened? How did you, you don't know the sacrifices they have made, the money they had been freely losing before they got to where they were. The place of sacrifice reaps benefit. And last, the last point is wisdom. The last point, what? Is wisdom. Let us quickly open her Bible. This is what Anna did. Anna, I don't know, I don't know if God was just directing this. The Spirit of God was upon this woman. Because in the place of Anna choosing not to respond to Penina, showed wisdom. Today we're talking about difficult people. That how do we deal with difficult people? And a major reference we made was sometimes you, don't, you need to act a fool. Anna acted a fool. If you go to Proverbs chapter 12, let me quickly open my Bible to Proverbs chapter 12, verse 6, so that we can quickly um, round up um, the word. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 6. And it says, Proverbs 12, verse 6 says, He said the words, no, no, it's not, it's not the one. 16, sorry. Proverbs chapter 12, verse... Even me, I know my Bible verse. Mother. Proverbs chapter 12, verse um, 16. 
I don't know if, you, if I'm taking too much time. If somebody is there, can you please read for us Proverbs chapter 12, verse, verse 16. What version is that? King James? Mm-hmm. And what, that's what um, version. That what version is that? New Living Translation. A fool is what? Is easily... A fool is quick-tempered. And... When insulted, if you look at the reading from the NIV version, it says fools show their annoyance at once, and but the prudent overlooks an insult. The prudent overlooks an insult. In the place of looking away, there is a reward. One thing God had been, one thing, uh, one, one major lesson I've gone, I've gotten through certain processes was a place of responsibility equals to reward. Let me tell you, that equation works like magic. Even if you are, even if you are, you are not wrong, even, I mean, even if you are right, accept the responsibility. For some reason, things just turn around and work in your favor. It's called the law of responsibility and reward. When you stand to be responsible in a certain situation, you get the reward. That's why somebody was saying, let me be the bigger person. You become the bigger person, but they don't know. You look like a fool, but at the end, it looks like a reward. And... <clears throat> And if you, I'm reading also from, um, let me read verse 18. Proverbs 12, verse 18 says, The words of the reckless pierce like swords, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. So in a place where you are in a situation like Penina was being so difficult, she was insulting Hannah. She, she didn't say anything. She overlooked that insult and she got a reward. She leveraged that to get what she wanted. But at the same time, it was like, I looked at it and God started teaching me the character or the underlying factor Behind people that envy others, what they show. Do you know people that act like they like you, like you, like you? Then later they switch as if, no, you are not a human being. They are talking to you anyhow. But oh, you were liking me just now. Now come, now, now, you don't like me again. It's envy. Listen, I was in a situation where, you know, I, I, was, I was just working at work. Even myself, I'm like, this one, I don't understand this envy thing, but God was teaching me something. This is how you will not leverage the relationship to, in your favor to function for you. Let me do psychology. Listen, psychology, I'll be medical students. Hey, this is a reverse psychology. If you notice a person is, you know, the first time the person meets you, oh my God, you're so amazing. Oh my God, you're so beautiful. Wow, oh, I love your hard work. I just say, next me, I beg, I beg, don't touch me, don't touch me. I don't like it, I don't like it. What happened? I didn't do anything. And Holy Spirit started teaching me. I, I, I started reading the book. Uh, I, I read a little bit on the laws of human nature. I read a little bit of that and talked about envy. What you do, when that person switches, when they do that, they realize. Because they don't know why they act that way. It's because deep down, they, are, they admire you. But they feel insecure within themselves. Then they are triggered. And later they come to themselves. And they'll be like, ah, I'm sorry. It's a camouflage. They will not smile. They will not be laughing at you. But you act the fool. Don't say, eh, eh, when you're talking to me, I did that one time in the past. I'm like, you were talking to me that way. And eh, please, please keep it to yourself. And that relationship is done. But this is what you do. Act the fool. Do I see if nothing happened? They will not start doing everything to, you know, make you happy. Because they know they have done something wrong, but you didn't call it out. So everybody say, that was what Anna did. Anna did not call back on Penina. No. Anybody that is trying to be having any manipulative character in your, or emotion around you, this is how you leverage it. Overlook insults and get the reward. Responsibility is equal to what? Reward. And in this season, we will walk in wisdom and not in foolishness in the name of Jesus. Amen. I believe I've come to the end of the words. I, I don't know if I took time. I didn't really check my time. My sincere apologies. Uh, my sincere apologies for any time that may have been taken too much. But let us just, um, before I close the service, I know this is not a, you know, a dialogue um, session. If anybody has any questions or anything, you can make reference and others online. If you are blessed by this word, you can release a comment. And at the same time, if you have major questions or prayer requests, you can also release it on various portals. Hallelujah. So can we please bow our heads in prayer? 
Can we please bow our heads in prayer? And at the end, the Lord remembered Hannah. I don't know, take ref, make reference to this point because there, 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 are certain, there are certain things that can really position you to get what God is actually releasing for you in this season. Begin to call upon the name of the Lord that Lord give me everything that is meant for me will be mine. Anything that has my name on it will be mine. Lord, give me the grace to walk in the path of humility. Give me the, the grace to walk in the path of obedience. Give me the grace to seek you diligently. Begin to call upon his holy name. Call upon his name. The Lord hears. He said, he said for he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. So why don't you use this opportunity to like seek God, to seek the Lord for his strength, to seek the Lord for his, his grace in this waiting period. That God will give you the grace to to walk in wisdom, that God will give you the, the strength to sow bountifully, that God will help you to be diligent in the name of Jesus, that God will help each and every one of us in this season, that anything that is meant for us, it will not pass us by in the name of Jesus. Lord, we say thank you for your grace. We say thank you for your mercy. Be it our exalted Lord Jesus. Thank you for a wonderful time in your presence. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Be it our exalted in the name of Jesus. Lord, we commit those that have heard this word today. My Father, let you not escape them in the name of Jesus. Lord, give us the grace to practice your word in the name of Jesus. Give us the grace to walk in wisdom in Jesus' name. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you for watching this video. If you have been blessed by this message and you want to surrender your life to Jesus Christ, can you say this simple prayer after me? The Lord Jesus, I come before your throne of mercy. I confess my sin and come into my life as my personal Lord and Savior. Let your blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary cleanse me from all my righteousness. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving me. If you have said that prayer along with me now, I want to say congratulations to you. For more information and inquiry, please contact us via the information on the screen. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and click the notification bell. God bless you.